Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Quick Take. Today we are going to be looking at CSL. So CSL is an Australian based um, biotechnology company. Based, um, so it's, it's almost like a pharmaceutical company. Um, so it makes uh, pharmaceutical products to treat various types of diseases. So it's a very well known company. It's probably been in the news um, recently just because of the coronavirus issue. Uh, so they also make uh, vaccines and stuff. So that's why it's still so big in the news. Um, now, why I decided to do this one um, is that uh, it's, I was just running, I'm, I've always wanted to buy CSL. Um, when I first started investing, I um, CSL price was $100 and I thought, shit, it's expensive per share. I didn't realize then what I realize now. It's, you know, it's, it's not about uh, the absolute price. It's like how much potential it has. And, and now it has, it's reached, uh, it's high, it was $300. Now it's gone down to 267 And that's the reason why I would like um, to have a look at it uh, because um, where's the buy point? Because it's a company that I always wanted to, um, you know, have a little bit of shares in. And uh, maybe this is the opportunity that I, um, you know, that, uh, that's been given to me. So, yeah, hence here we are. All right, so let's jump straight into the financials, the ratios. And then, let me ask, so PE ratio is 45. Um, yeah, that's not, it's not bad actually for such a big company and it's a huge company. Um, let's see the market, um, market capitalization, market cap. It's a hundred twenty-three billion dollars. It's a huge company. Um. So, and we have, uh, what is it? The quick ratio is one point three seven. Uh, so I got enough cash last at around that much. Uh, one and so a year. It does pay dividends, not much, but um, if you look at the banks and the saving loan, uh, saving accounts that you put the money in, this is definitely uh a better better deal than the banks these days. Just because the um, what is it, the RBA, the Reserve Bank of Australia, uh, don't see uh, putting up the interest rate, the cash rate uh, in time soon, just because the economy is still um, recovering. Um, even though um, Josh Frydenberg, um, the uh, treasurer, Australian treasurer, said we are technically out of a recession, but there's still a lot of ground to make up. So anyways, um, dividend yield is great, 1.1. Uh, great as in like, great, great, better than saving loans. So uh, not looking bad so far. Uh, so let's move up to the cash flow. Uh, all right, so why is loading? Internet is still very, very bad here. Um, so sometimes it takes a little bit while to load. So I really hope uh, that 5G is gonna be coming soon to Australia. Um, and uh, yep, yeah. all right, what well, is loaded? So let's continue on. Um, oh, look at that cash from operating activity is just uh, you know, not doubled but definitely gone up, it's gone down, then it come back up. Um, so let, let's see, uh, okay, that's fine. Investing, so you know, as a biotech company, this kind of thing, you, you, it, you want to see it been investing in. Uh, new technology um, and research and stuff like that. So it seems like it is. Um, and financing, it's actually paying back. Uh, so it borrows some more money. Uh, it just paid a lot of dividends from the look of that. So you can see here. Uh, so let's bring up our calculator. So you got $883.1 million. So that's the amount paid in dividends. Uh, minus uh, plus 198.8 so this is the amount of money that they just recently borrowed um, sorry it's supposed to be negative let's go back into that uh, copy uh, doesn't matter negative 883.1 plus 198.8 there you go 684 and there's that 42 uh, plus 42 642.3 and then you got Minus 0.4. Anyways, um, the point is, um, uh, it looks like this one is a little bit different. So let's borrow some more money. And um, like I said, you know, depending on the company, sometimes some company, you know, 
you want to see it borrow a little bit of money just because of one and depending on the interest rate if interest rate is low it's you know it's maybe it's a good idea to borrow some money um uh, instead of paying back money because you know when you borrow money you, you borrow credit so then um you kind of like borrow money you can see it in a way the way that ray dalio he's one of the uh, uh he's one of the very influential very innovative figures in uh finance um he is the founder of bridgewater house no uh, bridgewater not bridgewater house sorry um i'm just thinking of price waterhouse cooper uh, which is a uh, accounting firm anyway it's bridgewater anyways the point is that um, you can see uh, uh, borrowing money to do investment is like um, borrowing money from your future self saying like you know um i can't do what i i can't do what i want to do now because i haven't got the cash so i'm going to borrow money uh, for my future self uh, and use that to get to where I want to be in the future. So, you know, everyone's borrowed money, so there's no need to explain any further about borrowing money. But the point here is that um, borrowing money is not necessarily bad. I, In my previous videos, I make it sound like it's like the the worst thing ever. No, it, it's not. You, you want this um, degree of borrowing money, especially when, you know, maybe interest rates low like now. Yeah, so it's a, maybe it is a good idea to borrow money. Um, so it has decreased the amount of money it borrows, so which is fine. Um, yeah, and you want to look at the capital structure, capital structure of companies, like how much is in in debt, is, uh, like borrowed money, because borrowed money you got to pay interest, and how much is from issue issuance of shares and stock and stuff like that. So you know raising capital. Um, so yes. Uh, so the net change in cash is positive, uh, but you can see that uh, m most of it is actually from uh, the majority of that, you know, 50-50 really. 50% 50, uh, is from like the debt, 50 is from operating activities. Uh, main thing is that it is making money, and uh, during these times, uh, it, it's great to be making money. All right, let's have a look at the balance sheet. All right, so balance sheet. Asset is increasing, that's great. Cash is increasing, that's good. Um, and let's say current liabilities is, um, is kind of increasing. Kind of the same, you know, it, for, it's similar, it decreased since the year before, but uh, you can see that uh, it's overall has increased and it's a big company and there's a lot of research going on. So it's actually a lot of overheads for these kind of companies um, and, you know, now clinical trials. So when to create, uh, I have a background in pharmacy, so I understand the, um, the overheads of uh, uh, research in pharmaceutical product because, you know, you, you have... Uh, once you find a molecule, uh, so that you think that will treat a certain uh, disease or condition, uh, you patent that molecule, and the the patent lasts probably twenty years or so. But uh, ten of ten of those twenty years, you're going to be doing research, right? So research and clinical trials, making sure, uh, firstly, making sure it's safe, and then you want to make sure that it works, and then make sure that it's uh, or not. Um, you know, right? and then you got to monitor. So po post marketing monitoring, which is required in Australia and I'm sure around the world. I'm not sure uh, specifically, like in the US, if it does that. Uh, I hope it does. But anyways, the point is that uh, there is a lot of overheads in creating a new drug, a new molecule that will go on to the market and. You know, and if one of those clinical trials or research fails, you know, that's a lot of money that gone down the drain. So it is, you know, a little bit um, of a, a little bit of a gamble when you kind of like um, you know, invest in these kind of companies. I mean, investing is a form of gamble, but um, there's a lot of risk. Like if uh, or like recent recently um, the vaccine. Um, the COVID vaccine gave um, false positive HIV results. I mean, like it's false positive, so you know it's 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 good 
for the patients in terms that they don't have HIV, but it's, it's not a good thing to be giving your patients false positives you know, of HIV. It's HIV. It's one of those words when you when you hear it, you kind of oh no, I might lie. It's it's a lot to take in when you hear the word HIV and it's associated with you. Uh, anyways, the the point is that um, a company could be riding a lot on your know, one single molecule, um, especially the smaller biotech companies. Uh, but CSL is a bigger company, so um, one of the things that I would look at is um, you know what kind of product that uh, CSL make, um, and being in the pharmacy industry, in the medical and healthcare industry. I do have a more of an insight into like, hey, you know, this one here, this particular drug is widely used, uh, this particular drug is not, and so and so and so. Um, if you're not in, uh, then this goes back to like um, what I said a few videos ago. It's like, you know, you got to like uh, leverage your own background, like invest in companies that you know. So what I would do, you know, is uh, have a look uh, at, you know, the industry, and then the company and market for the company. Uh, all right, so a lot of ranting. Um, right, so that's liabilities, uh, total current, so that's payable in 12 months, gone up. Uh, total liabilities, so long-term debt and stuff's also gone up. So that's um, kind of expected from these kind of big companies with a lot of overheads. Especially when they're trying to expand, it's just a lot of money trying to expand. That's why um, IT and tech companies also appeal to me, just because the overhead is a little bit less. Um, scalability is huge for IT companies. Anyways, uh, income statement. So we can see total revenue has increased, always a good sign. Operating expenses also increased. Um, there's the breakdown. Um, Research and development gone up, and you want to see these companies researching and developing new drugs, um, and uh, because it has to have the competitive edge, has to have the technological edge over or biotechnological edge over its competitors. So I'm, I'm kind of glad to see that it's spending money in research and development. Uh, operating. So let's go straight to net income. Net income has gone up, which is again fantastic to see net income going up. Uh, so that's two billion dollars, by the way. To net income, two point one billion dollars. Yeah, overall, it um, it's a solid company and it's a blue chip company. That's what they call uh, these kind of companies. Um, so it's a solid company. Um, you know, you, you it's one of those companies that you you know, if it doesn't make uh, you know go up two hundred percent, which it did um you know you can't blame it because it, it's such a huge organization now um like you kind of wonder if it has passed the growth phase and i think it's towards the end or at least it's going to plateau and once it plateau it um you know it has to find new ways to to uh go instead of uh, skipping that phase or in the um, in the you know business life cycle, phase one is the baseline, phase two is rapid growth, phase three is tough, phase four is the decline. So it has to continuously research and develop new technology so it can skip the phase four or at least shorten it so it doesn't go back down to the baseline or even past that original baseline. And, uh, so you know. What I'm saying is that uh, I feel like CSL could be at um, the very um, end of phase two and towards, um, you know, moving into phase three. So there's going to be a little bit of plateau and uh, we'll look at that in the chart. And what you want to see is, that, is what's the chance that it's going to skip uh, phase four altogether or at least shorten it. Right, so here's the chart, and uh, from Trading View, Trading View has this nifty little thing where you can actually plot out its earning, and you can see there, you know, earning has been increasing 
and year on year, which is great. Um, so when I first kind of knew about the company, I think it was five years ago, it was, uh, yeah, $90 or $100. Something. So my friend told me about it. And then again, I'm like, oh, $100 per share, so expensive. And bam, five years later, it hit $300. And it's kind of, wow, you know, that's crazy. Um, anyways, so having a look at the daily chart, it looks like it's, um, a hit of resistance so it's kind of stopped at the same point now the question is is it going to go back up uh most likely you know, most likely it will go back up it's just one of those really big companies um that a lot has a lot of resources behind them to kind of like weather most storms the question as an investor you want to pose is like even if it is going up is it worth my money putting in uh, in the short term, or at least this particular downtrend that I see, um, there's no there's no buy signal for me here. Uh, volume is relatively low. Um, the MACD is uh, showing a sell signal up here, uh, which is um, fine. Um, it has to kind of uh, recorrect a little bit. I think uh, it could be a hype from all that like vaccine. You know, people looking, yeah, you know, it's a pandemic and people say, well, you know, um, you know, we need vaccines. So we need companies that can make vaccine and CSA is a company that can make vaccine. So, you know, uh, let's hope that they can, you know, succeed. And it's just, it's, and everyone's like, yeah, they will succeed. They, they're a big company and, and kind of hype the price up a little bit. So uh, what is that? 2019, here it is, uh, the end of 2019. 2020 kind of the crash there it didn't crash much and you can see like you know it's a it's a well positioned company for these kind of uh, time and that's fine um, look it, it's a sharp drop I wouldn't move in just yet just because uh, you know you want to see a signal that it will rebound at the moment it's a sharp drop went from 320 to 267 so let's say how much the percentage drop that is. Um, 320 minus 267 uh, divided by 320. So that's a 16% drop. And that's a huge drop. Um, you know, it could be worse. And I think it's going to go down a little bit more. Um, it probably, or if it does come back up, it will probably just go back to this point here. I just, I just can't see this sharp drop recorrecting um, anytime soon. So I want to wait into the signals. Um, so at the moment, I wouldn't buy. Uh, actually, let's draw a Fibonacci retracement and have a look at that. Uh, yeah, just scroll from here, it's fine. Uh, ooh, Fibonacci. Could you go all the way down here? Yeah. All right, so you can see that it's um, probably uh, past. It's on its way down to this point here, I believe, which is the the support here at the sixty one point eight mark. If it goes does go down there, I probably will put in a little bit of money. Um, at the moment, I probably just put in a thousand dollars, but I, I want to see other signals to say like, hey. Um, you know it's time to buy but you can see right here this is probably december 18 18 uh 2020 here you go 2019 all right sorry my bad uh so you can see these big spikes in volume it's these really big spikes they're inst institutional players um they kind of like drive the market and it's they they obviously what i'm okay before i continue but when, when you look at graphs you want to put this you have to formulate the story behind it as to the to the to as much facts as you can um get um so what i can say is that pandemic happened People look for companies, they, uh, people need vaccine, people look for companies that can make vaccine. 
and institutional player, obviously, so the big fund, hedge fund fund managers kind of like, hey, you know, CSL is a big company, they're more likely to succeed than any other on the smaller company. So they push, uh, they they go quite big, they go in quite big, and it, it causes the smaller retail investors, like mom and dad investor, individual investors, to kind of like, wow, you know, look at the price increase, let's go in. So you can see after this in, initial spike, the, all of these smaller volume kind of um, is what is the is the retail investors that's pushing up the price, not the institutional players. The institutional players kind of started off; they are the catalyst. So you want to look for those. So what I'm trying to point out here is that I won't go in until I see a big volume spike like this and maybe some on the map day um, I mean income if they have another income report comes out and it, it's kind of positive that's going to be great so you want to look for these signal and you want to follow the institutional investors because um, you know they know what they're doing um, well I hope you hope but um, the point is that they they do uh, they do drive the market to a certain degree and you want to think like the way that the institutional investors do so just to because let's say they sell massively and then the price drop right maybe they just want to accumulate right? uh, so they sell a big volume and it makes the market drop and everyone gets scared so the, again individual investors get scared and start selling it drops and then bam then this is when they come in to buy and and, and kind of collect the bargains at the moment, I don't see a reason for me to go in just yet, even though I am, you know, I always wanted to buy this, but I'm not going to be silly and on sentimental value and just buy it just because I want to. I want to make sure I can save my money. So, no, I won't be buying it now. Um, I'll be looking for signals. Uh -huh. um, and, you know, I believe they will come down to this point in maybe a couple of weeks. So I'll review this company in a couple of weeks. I mean, a couple of weeks, Google back. I mean, that's just the game. That's the, that's the nature of the game. And then you have to say, like, all right, well, where did I go wrong? And hence why I'm doing these videos. Um, again, mainly for myself as a, um, you know, video diary. And I urge that you guys keep a video diary for yourself when you're trading investing so you can see where you're going wrong where you're going right what's repeatable create a system that uh, repeatable dependable and um uh, uh and makes you a better trader investor right um yes yeah, so won't be doing any buying for this company anytime soon uh i'll leave it there and review in two weeks and see where it is it is very tempting, but I wouldn't jump in just yet just because you think the price is going down and that's a bargain. You want to make sure that the potential to go, there's also potential to, to go up. You don't want to buy stuff just because it's down. Um, and that's what I learned. Um, you know, they always say, you know, buy low, sell high, buy low, sell high. Well, you know, it's all relative, isn't it? This, this point here is high compared to that point, but it's, the lowest point, uh, not the lowest point, uh, a low point compared to that point. So buy where there is potential to go up, All right? But if you buy there, then you kind of have to wait a few, how many months? Oh, it's almost a year, a year before kind of kind of break even, and that's uh, that's a long period of time. And the other thing is, you know, uh, can you wait? Can you wait? Do you need that money in that short period of time? And that goes back to like invest only what you are willing to lose or what at least what you don't need right now, right? For a year. And you're going to have that long term vision. Otherwise, you're going to be selling at a loss, you know, like maybe you know you invest some money that you need for a house deposit and suddenly you need to buy a house at this point and la di da. And then you lost that much and you know it's, it's a terrible scene to see so yes i don't know I, i'm i'm looking at it and i'm kind of like oh here's the growth here's the baseline around there here's the growth phase so second phase and we're kind of hit with the um third phase or at least a recorrection and the top is probably 
the top is probably here actually and so you know if it keeps going down it might be entering a uh, phase four so no uh, i don't want to be that fool uh, uh, no look uh i don't want to look smart i just don't want to look stupid and at the moment it, if i go in uh, i think i will look pretty stupid um so yeah that's pretty much it um a lot of ranting today um so yeah <laughs> All right, guys. Um, again, these these videos are not meant to be financial uh, disclaimers, right? Um, financial advice. Uh, seek financial advice from your advice uh, financial advisor. Um, uh, but if you like what you see, uh, give us a thumbs up, share, comment, uh, subscribe. Uh, you know, uh, if you have any other thing you want to say regarding this video, uh, comment below. Again, be civil. Um, and uh, if you like uh, me to analyze any other companies or any other topic regarding finance, uh, you know, uh, again, put it in the comment and I'll get to it as soon as I can. Uh, beside that, thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys have a great day and a better year trading and investing. Take care. Bye.